All right, welcome back to the Island Contracting Nightly Sports Call. I'm Rich Walsh, along with Chris Muller for tonight's show. We're going to go out to one of my favorite callers on this show, Rob from the Hill District. What's up, Rob? Hey, Richie, man. Hey, listen, Ben Rothenberg trying to be a Brady. They running Ben Rothenberg's real offense in Tampa, and Tampa is running Ben's offense with the Steelers right now. He got too much control of the offense. Can you imagine – if Aaron Rodgers had Chase Claypool, James Washington, Deontay Johnson, and Juju Schuster, what would happen? Can you imagine? Yeah, Rob, you bring up a great point. Well, look what he's doing with just a, look what he's yeah. doing with Devonte <laughs> Adams and like the cast of Friends or something out there. He's doing pretty unbelievable. He probably should win the MVP award. You know, I love Mahomes, but Rodgers yeah. is having an MVP season. I actually like that take by Rob. I do. They're doing no risk it, no biscuit down in Tampa, and it's driving Brady crazy. And the Steelers are absolutely doing a variant of what Brady used to do. But the thing is, so like what Rob said there is true. Brady used to throw the ball 15, 20 times a game in a row sometimes. He did it to the Steelers. The problem here is, Rich, the Steelers are very literally doing that game in and game out. I mean, there is no variation to speak of, none whatsoever. And even if you were Tom Brady, if you were throwing it this much, eventually defenses would be able to catch on to it and start stopping it. You know, I want to make a point here. The first point is I think the Steelers arguably have the best four total receivers, one through four, in the NFL. The point I want to make, though, is, um, you know, talking about these dink and dunk type throws, you're right. It looks exactly the same every week. Uh, and Ben Roethlisberger is not Tom Brady. And I, I, don't, I don't see how this is going to – I, we need some variety here with the Steelers in this offense. You can't just keep doing that. What's their goal? That's a serious question. Is their goal to keep him upright? I've seen a lot of national writers sort of rhetorically ask this, and I think it's a good tactic, a good device to sort of use. What is the Steelers' goal? Is it to make sure Roethlisberger basically never gets touched, never gets sacked, gets the ball out quickly, or is the goal to put up points and win games? That's the bottom line here. It looks like at times their goal is just to make sure he doesn't get hit. I know he's getting up there in years. I'm sure he doesn't want to take more hits because he's taken plenty throughout his career. But it's either time to decide you're going to go out on your shield or you're just going to go out like chumps. And if they keep throwing the ball short like this, it's going to be going out like chumps. We all said it was Ben. That. You know, Ben's controlling this offense. I mean, it has to, right? You would think so. Um, isn't, yes. isn't like, I don't want to use the word embarrassment, but like – don't you want to win? Don't you want to throw the ball down the field? Don't you? Aren't you? I know he's the most competitive guy probably in Pittsburgh. It's like going out there and hitting a three wood off of every tee. I mean, come on, like hit the driver. I've Let's some, go. Hey, I've had some good rounds keeping it in play with a three iron off. All right, it's the like tee, hitting Richie. a seven you've iron. Seen me, you've you've seen me hit the driver sometimes. It's better that I keep it in the bag uh, more often than not. I, I don't know. I mean, I hear about how competitive of a guy he is. Does he not think he can get the ball down the field? That, that's my serious question. If he has full agency over what this offense does, and I think that he does, and I presume that he wants to win, if he's doing this right now, it makes you wonder if he thinks that's the best chance they've got, which then casts a lot of doubt on whether or not his arm and every other part of his body that's relevant to throwing the ball feels all that good at this juncture. And then my big question is, do you pay a game manager type player like this in Alex Smith 41, 42 million next year. What do you do? That's no. another huge well, question. I mean, you, you have to. I mean, they're on the hook for 22 of that, I believe, no matter what. And then there's 19 that I guess he could save them if he retired, I want to say. The cap is kind of uh, labyrinthine at that point. But no, I mean, he, that, that's a very good way of framing it. He is playing like a game manager plus, and he is due elite quarterback money, top of the line money next year because of them pushing. Uh, money back a couple more years to make some things work. No, it's not worth that money, but they're stuck with it right now, and they're between a rock and a hard place with him. Let's go out to Bob on line one. What's up, Bob? Bob, you there? Yeah, I'm right here. Go ahead. You're on. Hey, how you doing? Good. Hey, listen, the bin bashing needs to stop. Did we bash yeah, him? I'm here. Why? Can you hear me? Yeah, I got you. Okay. Well, listen, this bashing of Ben with two losses and everybody thinks his arm is no good and he got a lot of good receivers. You know, Bob, I'm not saying he's not any good. I don't think either one of us said that. I think that they need to change yeah, some things yeah. up. We need some variety in this oh, yeah, offense. Yeah. He keeps throwing five-yard passes. That's not going to work, obviously, right now because it hasn't yeah. worked. Has it worked? 
Bob, has it worked? Absolutely. Has no, it worked? No, it hasn't. Okay, let's change some things up. That's what I'm saying. We're looking at two losses, and here's a 43-year-old Brady who they're putting in the, in the Super Bowl already. Bob, would you He's bet on them? Answer. Bob, Bob no, if, I, if I told you you had to put 50 bucks on one team to win the Super Bowl right now, would you feel good putting it on the Steelers? I'd put it on the Rams first. Okay. All right, that's fine, but that's not the Steelers. It would be Kansas City or the Steelers because the Steelers are capable of beating Kansas City. Not with this offense And I don't know if I would put it on the Steelers second after Kansas City. Right this second, and I actually had Steve Palazzolo on the show today, Rich, and he disagreed with me. He thinks the Steelers are right there still with uh, Cleveland and with Baltimore in many ways. I would have a very hard time, and maybe it's just because I watched those two teams light it up and do things the Steelers just don't seem capable of doing. I don't have a really hard time imagining even the Steelers' defense slowing those two teams down enough for the Steelers to beat them in the playoffs right this second. Me too. I thought the same exact thing when I watched that game Monday night. Let's go out to Mike in Oakland. How you doing, Mike? Hey, what's up, gentlemen? How you doing? Good. Thanks for calling. Good. Hey, uh, listen, I want to just give my quick observation and then get your thoughts. You know what's telling? The, the, the deep passes that Ben has thrown primarily are just pretty much jump balls to Claypool, and you hope you get a flag. I mean, I watch other offenses, quarterbacks throwing the ball. You know, there's usually, uh, uh, you know, it's like right on the money to a, to, a, to a receiver running down the field. You don't see that very much. And I also noticed something that I think is, is kind of overlooked, and I want to get your opinion on the last two games we had the chance to drive down the field at the end of the first half washington we had three timeouts with a minute 50 left or something and we still had 52 seconds and two timeouts left against buffalo and the old ben from even a few years ago would be chucking the ball 30 yards downfield with two timeouts getting us in the field goal range at least and we basically played chicken we didn't do anything and i think that's telling and the coaches know that ben doesn't have the arm anymore and that's why i think we're going to be a one and done in the playoffs. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks, your- Mike. Do you think that's true? Do you think Ben does not have the arms? Yes. Oh, you do? I, it's, clear, it's clear that it's diminished from what it used to be. I mean, I think the single most ominous throw of his season was the interception that he threw when trying to go deep to James Washington. I saw Mark Caballi and others that were actually in the stadium. They said the wind wasn't that bad. Uh, certainly by Buffalo standards. They said James Washington had several yards on his defender. And and then the excuses were, well, Ben saw the play late and he had to throw a little bit flat-footed. Old Ben flat-footed gets that ball there with James Washington ahead of the defender. This Ben, that ball fluttered in the air and basically died like it was a Frisbee coming down. That is not a good sign at all. There's obviously something fundamentally wrong either with Ben or with this offense, uh, and that's the reason they've been playing this way uh, the last three games or so. So... You know, maybe we didn't notice it so much earlier in the year. He's 38. Yeah. He's 38. That's That might be what it is. He's 38, and he's coming off major elbow surgery, and maybe we were all whistling past the graveyard when we should have been seeing signs earlier in the season. All right. You know, you brought this up a little bit earlier, but I want to go to our Tri-State Office Furniture Tweet of the Day. Look at this graphic here. Uh, and I think this is one of the big reasons, Chris. Like, even with drop balls, do you think, Ben, do you think this offense is, is better? Say they, they make all these catches. Look at Deontay Johnson. 12 drop balls. The Arizona Cardinals have 10 altogether, drop passes this season. So going back to this offense by Ben, say they say they make nine out of 10 of those catches that were drops. Uh, Are you still more comfortable with this offense? uh, Or not really? No, because none of those. I don't remember there being any blatant like third down touchdown drops that took points off the board. Do you? I remember Eric Ebron in front of the end zone. um, They. I mean, that was that was a few games ago. But I mean, he might not even have got in. Deontay Johnson. They they still won that game. Another one where people thought he was going to get in in the Ravens game. Maybe he would have. Maybe he wouldn't have. Uh, Very few of these, I think, would have dramatically affected the point totals or the outcomes of games. They're just. They're drops on little four-yard hitch routes and slant routes and in routes. I mean, yeah. it's not really that significant of a deal. All right, we got to take a break. Back with more of your phone calls. Maybe some of your tweets coming up next. Stay right there. <laughs> 